Nigerian brands did not respect Nigerian artists. They made Nigerian talent feel like they have to beg to get on stage. Idris was the biggest artist in the country, one of the biggest. 50 wasn't even there when this thing happened. 50 wasn't there at all. So that needs to be clarified. What he did, he took a bullet for all the artists coming behind him. These guys messed up and said, he's not supposed to be there, remove him. And they physically removed him and physically took him off the plate. Welcome back guys, it's still a trending special brought to you by Airtel, my name is Pascal and right now we have the convener of one of the biggest summit Africa has ever had, the Omniverse Summit in the person of Obi Asika, thank you so much Saka, for coming through for trending brought to you by Airtel Now let's talk about the Omniverse, this amazing thing that's never happened in Africa before, it's happening right now let's say for the first time and you being one of the exponents and the ideas person of this event that's taking four days in Lagos, the economic capital of West Africa. Let's talk about the concept of how you came about this concept of the Omniverse. Why the Omniverse? Why did you decide Omniverse? Well, it's funny, you know, I used to do something called Social Media Week Lagos. And we did that for 10 years. I was involved. It's still, I mean, it, it's, it's changed its name because it got bought globally. The people who created it sold it to Advertising Week, which is Ad Week, right? But in that experience, we were able to bring together, because that's my nature anyway, I work in multiple spaces, so I bring together those multiple spaces and relationships into one place. So basically, I have a situation where I've seen that people can collaborate and can come together, but we lost that platform. So okay, let's create our own platform, a new platform that's coming from here, but it's driven through the ecosystem. So Innovation Support Hubs, ISN Hubs, has 190 hubs, Innovation Tech, Accelerator Co-Creation Hubs, Creative Hubs in 30 states in Nigeria. I'm a member of ISN Hubs. We partner together, go to DTC, which is a Digital Transformation Center in Nigeria, a program of GIZ and the EU. And they saw the vision, but we said to them, listen, we want to build the biggest platform. The biggest platform that connects all ecosystems. Tech, creative, financial, regulators, business, government, academia, health, agriculture, fitness, wealth, sports so that we can work together, we can collaborate together, we can build together, together. because typically Nigerians are doing this and silos, left doesn't know what the right is doing. If you come together, you get more leverage, you have better opportunities to raise capital. Copy that. You can do bigger business, mm -hmm. do more deals because you have leverage, you have access, and now we democratize opportunities. So it's not that you heard or you didn't hear, no. It's there. iDice was here, they already told you what they're gonna do. True that. More you will hear more, but the key thing is to bring it to the people, bring it to the people. So we have ecosystem leaders, associations, organizations, and community members. We already have like 70. That's the intention of the Omniverse to aggregators, to converge associations across multiple sectors, working with the idea that tech enables every sector. So with technology, you can scale an idea, you can scale your service, scale the amount of people you're serving. And then most importantly, you can solve each other's problems. So the That's guys the in the creative industry, Talk to the guys in tech, let them build the solution for you, right? The guys in the tech industry, exactly. talk to the guys in creative, let them tell the sto your story for you. True that. We can combine. And when we combine, we can be bigger. We can get more Maven stories, True that. more Iwaju stories, more of that. Tokyo James. You know, Nigerians are excelling everywhere. But what we need to do is bring it home, change the feeling we have about each other and ourselves. So we can bring and so you, to see value in yourself is the most important thing. So the Omniverse wants to unlock the value that's already lying within us and bring it to, out to the world and enable everybody to engage it because you can create line of sight. If you're not a Nigerian, even if you're in Nigeria, to find all these people is hard. It is. How do you meet them? How do you find them? How do you, you know? So the Omniverse wants to bring that together. It's a convergence, it's a collaboration and convergence platform. Absolutely. So it's not a summit. The summit is just an annual event. So this is the first one. Tomorrow we launch the platform. So welcome to the Omniverse. Let's see how You're it goes. A member. But let's we talk about um, you know everything that becomes a success. Of course, has challenges. Of course, that you went through. Can you give us some challenges that you went through bringing these amazing people together? We're still going through the test. challenges today. <laughs> exactly. You saw what just happened. Exactly. That. You saw what just that. happened. That. So, so the issue is, you know, people have perception. Mm -hmm. So you might walk in here and you think, oh my God, we have so much money. We have no money. There's no money. We did this thing on hearts. We believe that we're doing the right thing. So we found partners who believe with us. So at least we paid for the venue. Every other thing we had to go and be scratching. We're still scratching. I have an incredible team of at least 50, 60 people working full time who are volunteers. 
If we had to pay those guys salary, we don't have the money to pay them. So they obviously they're here for something more than money. Do you understand? And that's maybe because we're able to provide inspiration and leadership. And Charles at Mambalu, who's my partner, who I hope you're going to have a chat with. Copy. Who's the, he's the chairman of ISN Hubs. He's been critical because kind of the innovation ecosystem, you know, I have a big personality, so I talk, they think that's, it's all about entertainment and music. No. Tech, for me, like AI, is the key thing, that would, the game changer of everything. I actually believe gaming would be much bigger than our music or Nollywood. And when our music or Nollywood fully enters the gaming and they collaborate, yeah. then we're going to be making trillion dollar deals. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's where we need to go. We have the numbers, we have the talent, we have the market, and our market is worldwide. It's 200 countries. It's not about sitting in one place. And we really want to connect to the black diaspora. So it's Nigeria, Africa, the black diaspora, and the world. I see black first. I'm not racist, but I see black first. Black first. Yeah. It's easy to the eye, it's clear to the eye. Let's talk about the collaboration between music and movies now. Because you know, you are the DG of uh, art and culture in Nigeria, which of course, it makes a lot of sense. Before, I know they gave you that particular appointment, your paperwork, what you've done in the past, why I feel like they gave you that. How do you think that your office now, you being the director general of this particular amazing ministry, can actually foster a relationship between how we can actually sell our products, right, a product, a service, music, 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 movies, outside of the world, whereby they can even get more and our streams will be higher than it is right now? It's a number of different ways. And to be honest, I'm not really going to be, I don't like making promises and I can't deliver, right? So for me, I'm, I come from the ecosystem, I come from the industry, so I know the issues. I don't know every single issue because nobody's God. I know a few, uh, quite a few. And I also know the leaders, right? Because I've been one of them and I am one of them. So what I look forward to is collaborating. Four years ago, I led the technical working group that brought culture, hospitality, tourism, and creative industries to the National Development Plan for the first time. When we did that, we did 13 focus groups with leaders in fashion, in manufacturing, in music, in television, in movies, in merchandise, because the sector is deep, I mean, it's wide. Fashion is the biggest segment in the Nigerian creative economy, and we don't talk enough about it, okay? The movies, maybe the second biggest. The music travels faster than everything else, right? Because the music animates everything. I think Nigerian food and culinary stuff is about to explode. It's it already, is exploding. You see it in social, it but when exploding. we start seeing, and you can see the restaurants coming, but I want us to be like Chinese restaurants. You get any country, any country you go to, any city you go to, there's a Nigerian restaurant on the high street making money. Because everybody loves jollof rice, everybody right? Loves food. They ever loves food, food pounded yam, <laughs> the soup. Uh -huh. Personally, offer wear for me. Ah! <laughs> you know, everybody's got that own thing. Banga for me. You know, oh, banga for you. <laughs> yeah, banga for me. <laughs> no wala. <laughs> That's it, though. Amazing. It's a great idea. It's, it's a great it. idea. So, what we want to do is work with our foreign minister, somebody I've known for years, and to see how we can input these things deeper into what the government does intentionally, right? In terms of foreign side. In terms of domestic, with the Nigerian Governors Forum and the government, of course, domestically. Because the truth of the matter is, I believe that the oil and gas, gold, all these things, they will eventually finish, okay? Because they're, they're not, they're finite assets. Yeah. The Nigerians, by 2050, be 450 million. We're not going anywhere. So the Nigerians, are, we ourselves, what we do in this sector is the product of what Nigerians create. So the truth of the matter is it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Exactly. So even if anybody who's trying to resist us, give up now. Give up now. We're That's irresistible. My brother, from. we're irresistible. Exactly. The swag, the women, the dancing, the music, the fashion, the attitude, the, movies the personality. Also. The movies carry all of these things as well. So the stand-up comedy, the sketch artists on Instagram, all of these people are ambassadors. I stole that from Shopsy Do. You know, I always tell him, I said, I love this thing he says about how my ambassador, he calls all the artists my ambassador. And you know, because he's the host for Afro Nation, mm -hmm. he yeah, goes yeah. out and does all his stuff, but he's saluting them every day. Because 20 years ago, the story about us was different. A lot of the Nigerians in the West were not claiming to be Nigerian. They'll tell their name is Dave or Steve. I said, yeah. you know, Yinka. Yeah, boss, no, Wale, no, no. Wale. <laughs> At least Wale called, kept his name. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, but now mm -hmm. I think everybody is proud. You can't deny who you are. 
Exactly. And, if you, and if you try to deny it, they'll point you out. Because they'll point you out that you are this. Me, anywhere I go in the world, I can tell you the Nigerian. Exactly. The attitude exactly. is heavy. Exactly. Money or no money, the attitude is heavy. But this particular thing that we're also doing, this thing you're doing right now, could definitely also rub off on sports. Oh, 100%. For, Ni for Nigerian-born um, uh, half-caste. Listen, man, let me, let me tell you something, <laughs> right? Sports is actually my first passion. Good. Yeah, okay, my first passion. I'm on the board of Sport Nigeria, which is a, a SPV created by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. And we have been there. We did the sports industry policy in 2021. The chairman in KTOB, the CEO in KTOB, is also chairman of the Nigerian Football Women's League. You know, our, football, our women are the best we have right now, Extremely. right? Extremely. And, you know, Sport Nigeria is focused on sport as business, not sport as recreation. And there's a whole strategic plan, sporting schools. Even here, they were supposed to be here because sports is critical. Right? For me, it's critical. I happen to be on the Board of Trustees of the Nigerian Olympic Committee because sports, to me, is life. It is in sports you find the values to live your life. How to win, how to lose with dignity and not treat the guy. If you, if you beat the guy, you don't have to stamp on his head. You can shake his hand. Exactly. Congratulate him on a good game. Exactly. If you win 1-0, that does not mean you destroyed him. It means you beat him. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> they give your opponent some respect quality. and they give you respect. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the things that we Nigerians seem to have lost because we don't have sports in our schools. If I was a dictator in Nigeria, the first thing I would do is make school sports compulsory, compulsory. six days a week, six. five days a week, Monday to Friday. Compulsory two hours a day, everybody's got to go play sport because sport gives you the mental conditioning to win, the physical it fitness is. to live, and the values to live by. And emotional, absolutely, it does. You talked about 20 years ago whereby people really you know, understand the value of Afrobeat, but right now they're seeing the beauty of Afrobeat that is actually spread across the nation. But right now we've also known that there's been some really controversial stories that we've been hearing for a long period of time. For example now, the Idris Abdul Karim and uh, 50 Cent thing that happened uh, many yeah. years ago about the Nigerian beauties and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've managed the likes of General Pipe, Ash, uh, Sasha P, Net to see and all, even before they became stars, you knew them. And you've been in the industry for over 30 years. And you've done this, let's say, majority all your life, all your youthful life, you've, you've been in the space trying to take the bullets for the likes of us that are just coming right now. But let's quickly know, where were you on that particular day that this Idris Abu Karim thing happened? This um, Nigerian Buries and Idris and 50 Cent and what really happened? Well, the funny thing is this, right? Maybe you have to watch Journey of the Beats, which is a documentary series I produced okay. on Showmax. What's the name again? Journey of the Beats. The Journey of the Beats. On, right. on Showmax and Africa Magic. It's 10 episodes, and it's the story of our music for a thousand years up until today. In that series, we have Idris. He tells the story himself for the first time. And the interesting thing is, my friend was general manager of G Units at the time. Okay. And who kid? And I had a conversation with Nasty C about two years ago on a podcast, which is on Spotify somewhere. So myself, Who Kid, and Nasty C. And we talked about that issue. But Who Kid tells the story even better than anybody else, right? The basic situation was this, and that's the reality. Nigerian brands did not respect Nigerian artists. Nigerian brands did, did not, not respect yes, they Nigerian did not. artists. They made Nigerian talent feel like they have to beg to get on stage. They diminished them, and they did it to the musicians, they did it to the comedians, they did it to Nollywood. So it's like you're coming in a begging bowl just because you're a talent. So today when you see a situation and some people say, oh, they're costing too much. It's like Jay-Z said, Jay-Z said I overcharged them what they did to the Cold Crush, right? The Cold Crush brothers were like the first generation of rappers. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't get paid. By the time Jay shows up, you know he's getting paid because you, you raped the first set. You can't so do these, that guys, these guys are the first set. Idris was the biggest artist in the country, one of the biggest, right? And he comes and does this show, and he told them that he wanted the same rights as 50. Not the same money, he's not going to get the same money. Whatever you're giving him in his rider, same thing. Perhaps so they do, show in, La yeah, do the show in Lagos. There's a chartered plane to take them to Benin, I think. It was either Benin or Portacos. So when they get onto the plane, 50 wasn't even there when this thing happened. 50 wasn't there at all. So that needs to be clarified. 50 didn't do anything physically or anything to anybody, but 50 was going to be involved in the repercussion. So what happened is, Tony Yeo was on the plane, and I think Who Kid were on the plane. So what had happened was there's a chartered plane. The chartered plane is chartered by the, by the brand. Idris gets on the plane, and he wants to sit down in business class, because he wants to talk to the artist. He wants to talk 50, maybe talk collabo, build relationship, which is what artists do. 
but the philosophy of the local brands at the time was separation. They would even tell you to come and bring your artist to perform for the foreign guy. I refused to do that. I said, what are you talking about? So people, someone's coming to my country, I'm going to bring my artist to perform for him like a performing monkey. That's just a reflection of your mentality. And that was what it was at the time. But people like Idris were not in a position to have somebody to say that for them. What he did, he took a bullet for all the artists coming behind him. That's the truth of it. Because they ended his career they after did. that whole thing happened. You didn't see him again. Because like, they, they, like he's a troublemaker, but he's not a troublemaker. He came on the plane, he sits down in business class. He has every right to do that. He's a superstar in his country. He's going on tour. Why should he not be able to sit in business class? Now, the agency running the event, the security guys come and tell him that, look, only G-Unit is supposed to be in the business class. Exactly. He's like, based on what? I'm a head, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on a headliner the bill. Too. I'm an artist, I'm on the yeah. bill. So they go and ask the agency guys, and the agency guys messed up. I said, he's not supposed to be there, remove him. And they physically removed him and physically took him off the plate. So 15 is not there. 15 of these guys are not there when this thing happens. By the time they arrive and they get on the plane, they just see this guy over there who they don't know screaming and freaking out, insulting anybody on that plane, cursing them out. So 50 sits down and yet, who can says to them, bro, I think we need to go back to the States. With that, why, what happened? So they just took that guy off the plane. I don't know him, but he's going off. He's cussing us out. We don't, I don't know what happened, but we can't get caught up in this. Because, you know, the Americans, Americans used to carry guns. We don't have any guns with us. We don't know where we're going in this place, Nigeria. We could be going to his hometown. We arrive there and there's a thousand people waiting for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's on a Saturday morning or something, or Friday morning. 50 makes a call, calls it off force majeure, goes to the international airport, jumps on a plane, and they're gone. Whoa. So it's force majeure. So the agency's not happy because they lost that. They paid their money and they've lost the artist, right? So they put all the heat and pressure on Idris. But it's actually wrong because they mistreated him in the first place. There's no reason. It, it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stunning lack of self-awareness to reduce your own citizen to be a houseboy for the person who's coming from outside. But that is what it was normal here for 34, as of the things we had to kill for Afrobeats to become what it is. So Idris was the sacrificial one lamb. of them, one of them, because I can tell you that we had to open up everything. Before 2005, kids from the mainland can't come into the island and come into clubs, restaurants and bars. Who's going to let them in? True that. Let's change all that culture. So we changed all that culture. True that, true Opened that. Opened up everything. So you stop doing this, them and us, them and us. No, we're all Nigerian. We're all black. We're all African. We're all here. So you can't be talking down to people diminishing people because oh half the artists all the this is nigeria all the artists have degrees they all went to school it's not like they dropped out at 15 like in other countries exactly so you can't don't talk just, down don't, thank you but that was it was natural you will still notice you're younger in nigeria there's a lot of ageism older people are to, constantly talking down to yes yes yeah, it still happens yeah yeah it's still happening yeah. that's not a good thing that's not it's not it's not something i'm proud of I don't think any older person talking down to young people should be proud of it. Based on what? What did you do at that age? Who gave you the right? That's my feel. I'm like, based on what? Why do you have to When do you that? were that age, what were you doing? But it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, I said, really? What were you doing at that age? Do you understand? Carried so you. I think when we want to get the generations together, you have people who understand that it's about a two-way conversation. If you're just having a one-way conversation, you're talking to yourself. Exactly. If all I'm doing is talking down to the kid, he's not going to listen to me. True that, true that. I, mean, true I haven't that. seen anybody win an argument by shouting at somebody. So you've got to find a way to have a conversation where we can both connect, both make sense. I very nice that. So that to me, it's really not easy, happened. but these are the things. Yeah, right. But it happened and it was unfortunate, but it was a global story before social media. It was, it was. There was no social media. That thing was viral everywhere because the story was that Guy got jacked, 50 almost got jacked, had to take off. 50 wasn't scared of anything. His 50 people was were just like, being cautious. Prime as well. He was number one in the world. You know, who's this guy trying to jack 50? But Idris is a powerful story. I want to tell you one Idris story. You know, when I met him, because I met him then, I said to him, man, tell me your story, you know? And the same thing Jay-Z said about Lagos the first time he came here. So Jay-Z took the, from the, a ride from the airport into town. He told his guys at Rock Nation, so you never seen a hustle like this, man. So you see a guy selling shoes in traffic. 
When he wakes up in the morning, what size does he take onto the street? How does he know? And how many pairs is he carrying? And how many days is he able to sell? That's incredible hustle. You know, hustle in terms of the, the, the ability to keep pushing. Exactly. So I'm going to sell because if I don't sell, I can't eat, right? That's what, he never said anything like it. And we see it every day. We take it for granted. But that's what the hustle is. Real. Now, Idris, if you're a hip hop head, you know what this means. Idris told me that the day when he landed in Lagos, from a polygamous home, his mother was living, some, one of the wives, his father's wives, was living in Lagos, had a house, but he never even thought about going there. He didn't get along with the woman. So he lived under the bridge in Obalande for six months. That's a real story. Then he kept hearing Kenneth's FM on radio. He moved to their radio station. Right? AIT FM. Ray Power, sorry. Ray Power. It's yeah, he, AIT too. Yeah, he moved there and moved into an abandoned building next to the radio station. I was there for another couple of months, trying to find a way to get an audition to come and rap, right? But I said, How were you first surviving? He said, Back in those days, if you saw somebody driving a Honda, they were likely from the north. My house had people, they loved the Honda car. So he said, When he sees Honda cars in traffic, Think about this. He would go and knock on the window. And if it's a northern, when they wind down, he start rapping in Hausa. And they'll give him some money because they've never seen anything like it. And that's how he survived for six months. I said to him, man, that's a movie. That's a lot. That's a movie. That's an incredible. When people talk about from the grass to grace, from the streets up. He dresses grass to grace. That's it. Two faces grass to grace. Daddy Shoki is grass to grace. These are legends. You can't have a burner boy without a Daddy Shoki. It's impossible. True that. You have to understand the same energy, right? You can't have Whiskey without the band. You can't have Davido without these guys. Just so it's it's actually a connected thing. P Square, when P Square was sounding like they were cover artists, to when they stepped into their own, it's a different thing. Absolutely. So people were flying them right. in PJs in 2007. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's 15 years ago, right? 14 years ago, African heads of state were calling, uh, selling P Square for. Come and do Independence Day in my country, send the PJ. Before social media. Do that big. And it's still training brought to you by Airtel. We're we'll going on a short break right now. We'll return. Um, of course, the DG Council of Fire Art and Culture is still in the building. Of course, in the person of Obi Asika. Let's go on a short break. We'll be right back. Training comes back when you're ready to stick around. All right, welcome back. It's still trending. Special brought to you by Airtel. Pascal is still in the building. And of course, I see you have a DG in the building as well, Mr. Obi Asika in the building. Let's talk about um, some things right now. We're about to play some games. So I'm asking you some questions. Are you answering? Let's I'm going to mess up, man. I'm sure. You ready? <laughs> but so far, what you've done is so great. So here are the questions. You're answering in less than 60 seconds. You ready? Christian, Muslim, or traditional? Traditional is which one are you? I'm Christian. Christian. But Dear. I have a traditional title. You had traditional title. What's, title, what's your course. name? Ojinaka. 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 What's the meaning of that? It's the right hand of the king. Oh, you know the right hand of the king right now. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this now. Beer or Hennessy? Mmm. Beer. Beer or Hennessy. All right. Bush meat or chicken? Chicken. Chicken. All right. Copy that. What's your favorite soup again? A four wear. A four wear. All right. What do you do when you wake up? Man, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming through and training right here by Airtel. Appreciate Thank you so man. much. And of course, man, everything you're doing, we're seeing it. And of course, we'll keep supporting the way we can as well. I know that, what's your final word for the people right no, now? First, I just want to thank Hip TV. You know, Hip TV, you know, I was there when it was Hip Hop World Magazine. Yes. You know, we're there when, you know, we brought Channel O to partner with Hip TV in 2007, right? And that led to the channel happening, I exactly. believe. Exactly. So I've always been collaborating with your publisher and IO. And I'm just happy to see the brand where it's at. I'm happy the headies are coming home. Coming back home, exactly. I have a headie somewhere they gave me okay, in 2008. Okay, yeah, yeah. fantastic. So we're, fantastic. we're a member of the family. Mm, so congratulations right. on everything you guys do. Looking forward to collaborating with you guys in the new role. Absolutely. Because I think that what we want to do, be able to do, is bring more opportunity, open up the space. There's so much talent in Nigeria. A lot. Beyond Lagos. A lot. Kafanchan to Sokoto. It is. Enugu to Abba, Port Harcourt, Bayelsa. A lot. Everywhere. There's so much talent, and it's not just music, it's art, it's artists, it's, it's, it's fashion designers. But what I'm really interested in is 
Let's get to the business, right? Let's enable platforms that enable our people to monetize on our own platforms. I'm not in favor of exporting everything. A lot of people want to japa. Only 1% can japa. <laughs> Only 1% can japa. How many people do they want to take? We've got to build bro? our country, bro. Absolutely. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through again. I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it. Man. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank all right, Stu Trani brought to you by Airtel. Thank you so much for uh, being part of this particular episode. My name is Pascal. Follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Twitter as well is at official HipTV. YouTube is at HipTV as well. Follow us, and of course, remember, I'm a little bit of 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 a little